Let's get lifted. Let's get lifted. Let's get lifted. Let's get lifted. Let's get lifted on these ABCs. One, two, threes. Take a look inside. Everything you need is right in front of you. Or right inside of you on these ABCs. All right. Hey there. I'm, my name is Lauren Jones, also known as Butterfly Jones, also known as your tutor. Do you mind learning with me? Please? <laughs> Thank you. So let's go over some of our icons today. The first will be Fanny Lou Hamer. Born October 6th. 1917, died March 14, 1977. She was how old when she died? 1977, passed away, born 1917. How old was she? All right, 60 years. The television cameras rolled as Fannie Lou Hamer recounted an arrest as a civil rights activist when she was beaten with a blackjack. With the blackjack. She was beaten with the blackjack. She was addressing the Credentials Committee of the 1964 Democratic National Convention as a leader of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, which challenged the right of the all white delegates of the Democratic Party to represent the state since African Americans had been excluded from choosing them. The youngest of 20 children born to sharecroppers and the sharecropper herself, Hamer was forced to leave her home for attempting to register to vote. She worked with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, dedicating herself to voter registration. When asked by a reporter if she were trying to be equal with the white man, she replied, I don't want to go down that low. I want the true democracy that'll raise me up and that white man up. Raise America up. Fannie Lou Hamer. All right. Now we're going to do Phyllis Wheatley. May 8th, 1753 to December 5th, 1784. After being kidnapped from West Africa as a child and taken to Boston on a slave ship, Phyllis Wheatley landed in a place of servitude in a Boston family that treated her well and encouraged her education, in which she was able to cultivate her natural gifts for verse and language. By the time she published her first poems in 1767, Wheatley had also mastered Greek and Latin to the amazement of local scholars, many of whom had genuinely believed such feats to be beyond the capacity of Africans. Many of Wheatley's subsequent poetic works written in the English neoclassical style were published in poems on various subjects, religious and moral, in 1773. So there was, there was a, um, a writing called Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, in 1773. Wheatley's library reputation and personal magnetism gained her admiration both in the United States and England, and after her death, she became a potent symbol of a Black of black intellectual accomplishment in the ideological battle against slavery. These are African-American women knowledge cards from the, con from the Library of Congress. Phyllis Wheatley, all right. Ethel L. Payne, born August 14th, 1911, Chicago, Illinois, and passed away May 28th, 1991. Washington, D.C. So she was born in Chicago. She passed in Washington, D.C. That's where I was born. And she and she was how old when she passed? Known as the first lady of the black press, Ethel Payne got her start in journalism in 1951 when she was hired as a reporter by the Chicago Defender. Establishing a reputation for solid writing and straightforward observations, Payne moved to Washington, D.C. and covered the nascent, nascent, nascent civil rights movement for the Defender, which was a writing, uh, which was a publication. Uh, 
One of the first black women accredited to the White House press corps, Payne, in the words of one colleague, asked the questions we should have been asking. On one occasion, President, uh, on one pressing, President Dwight Eisenhower so persistently, uh, I'm sorry, she, she asked the questions we should have been asking on one occasion, pressing President Dwight Eisenhower so persistently about his plans for de desegregating interstate travel that the confrontation became a front page story. Payne's years of civil rights coverage earned her an invitation to the Oval Office to witness President Lyndon Johnson's signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In the mid-1960s, she turned to international affairs, eventually covering 30 countries on six continents. In 1972, she became the first black female commentator employed by a national broadcast network when she was hired by CBS. All right, that's Ethel L. Payne. Now, Ralph W. Ellison, who is our last icon for the day, born March 1st, 1914, passed away April 16th, 1994. So how old was he when he passed? All right. Ralph Waldo Ellison is best known for his semi-autobiography semi-autobiographical semi novel, Invisible Man, 1952, the first novel to describe the racial climate of American society, particularly in attitu its attitudes towards black men from the perspective of an African American. Born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Ellison studied music at Tuskegee Institute, Interested in the arts and literature, he moved to New York City where he became a protege of Richard Wright. Wright introduced Ellison to T.S. Eliot, whose poems made a profound impression on him. He joined the F Federal Writers Project and began submitting short stories, essays, and reviews to various periodicals. After serving a World War II, he wrote Invisible Man, which won the National Book Award for Fiction in 1953. Ellison also published a series of essays, including Shadow and Act, 1964, and Going to the Territory, 1986. Lectured worldwide on Black culture and folklore and taught at several U.S. colleges and, and universities, he left a second novel unfinished at his death. Photograph courtesy of National Archives Knowledge Cards, published by Pomegranate Publications in California. All right, those are our icons today. So we have Fannie Lou Hamer, Phyllis Wheatley, Ethel Payne, and Ralph W. Ellison. All right, thank you for getting lifted with me on these ABCs. One, two, three, let's take a look inside. Everything you need is right in front of you. All right, inside of you on these ABCs. All right, see you next time.